Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we, in this video we're going to talk about Holly HyperSpark base time settings. These are the settings that the software wants you to put in either on your little handheld or on your laptop just to get you going and running and driving down the road. And so the theory we're going to use is you're going to see what you had with the original stock distributor, what your vacuum settings were, what your mechanical advance was, and your base timing off the crank. You can add those together to get the numbers that Holly wants. So let's talk about it and dive into it. So for some better spark control and to complement the Holly, we took out our old uh, HEI distributor and went for the full sniper setup. Installs pretty straightforward, follow your directions. Don't forget to use the clear magic cap there to set where things go. There's a full Holly procedure on it. It's pretty straightforward. Just follow it. And you need to know your base timing. That is the one that you set with the timing light. You know, the pane on your application will say like 8 degrees or 10 degrees before top dead center. You can just see the mark down in there. Uh, they'll be a little bit different on other applications. However you do it, you need to know what your base timing was before. On this particular application, I have it set at 16 because I found that this engine runs best on 36 degrees of all timing under wide open acceleration or WOT, wide open throttle. And that is your mechanical advance plus your base timing. If you know your mechanical advance is 20 degrees, then you bump your base timing down to whatever the difference is to get your full. Now, a lot of engines like 32 degrees or 34 degrees, you would adjust your base timing down to 12 or 14 degrees to match that. Well, let's take a look at how the factory distributor works. This is your very garden variety HEI. These are great distributors. I ran this one for many, many years. I just wanted a little bit better spark control. It's a lot easier just to beep, beep on the computer, get what you want, and uh, go from there. So as you can see, this part hooks your cam, spins around. No, I'm not gonna go into the whole detail how this things work, just the advanced part. But this is your advanced cam and the mechanical is on the inside. So let's take it down and uh, take a look at it. I think these things started going into GM products about 73, 74, 75, somewhere around in there. And made it up to the 80s before they started getting a little more computer controlled. Let's get that rotor off. Voila, here we go. So your distributor does two types of advance. It does a vacuum advance and it does a mechanical advance. The vacuum advance, and we're talking manifold vacuum here guys, we're not talking ported. We can't. The vacuum advance, as you're say idling and you're cruising, you know, part throttle, there is vacuum on your manifold and it will apply that vacuum and it will suck this in and give you some advance. Now how much advance these will give you depends on your original application. I've seen anywhere from 8 degrees all the way up to 20 degrees and you can buy aftermarket ones that will allow you to tune it. And the idea behind that is if you put in a bigger cam, you lose your vacuum at an idle and you want a little bit more vacuum advance at an idle, it helps smooth that out, especially with a larger camshaft. And that's where the tunable ones come into place. This allows you to dial that in. For the purpose of there are base settings, we're gonna assume a 12 degree advance that it will give you for idle and for cruise. We're not gonna get into fancy curves or anything like that at that point. That's for later. That is your vacuum part of it, kicks in during an idle, and we are lightly cruising on the freeway to advance that up. Um, this is very important on the cruise is because when your engine RPM is up and you're not much on the gas, you end up with a leaner kind of mixture in the cylinder, and to make it more efficient, you want a little bit more advanced. And that's where this comes in, you get a little bit better miles per gallon out of that. You want that. Their part is these, these are weights and they come out based on in your engine rotation and you can tune these as well. So 
as it spins faster, these weights flip out and how fast they do and how quick depends on the, your springs and your weights themselves. But these are worth 20 degrees of advance. If you're driving down the highway, say you're turning 2,500 RPM, you're just slightly cruising, you will have advance here added to this advance because your RPM is up and here comes your weights. Now, if you're wide open throttle, you have no manifold vacuum or low enough that this won't kick in. So you only have your base timing plus your mechanical advance, but none of this. And that's important too. So let's recap what we just went over. You've got your base timing. That's the one you set with your timing light on the engine. You have your mechanical advance. For an HEI, it's 20 degrees. If you're running like a Ford or Mopar, look it up and see what it is. But you want to know what your max factory mechanical advance number is, whatever it is. Here, it's 20 degrees. Next is your vacuum advance. Um, that is all over the board. And in this case, we're going to assume 12 degrees. A lot of people do 14 and 16. And you might end up there. Um, cruise timing, you know, a little over 50 on these engines actually works pretty good. We're going to end up a little under that because we're going to be a little bit conservative on running and driving type of timing. And so you want to know base timing, vacuum timing that you're going to go with, we're doing 12, mechanical timing, and we're doing 20. Okay, I wrote it all down on my professional level whiteboard here. <laughs> so these numbers we just went through, but you've got your, your base timing that's right off the crank, 16 degrees. Mechanical advance for this is 20 degrees. Vacuum that we're assuming, kind of mid-range, 12 degrees. So how does this work out? The Holly Sniper wants to know what your idle is. That's going to be your base plus your vacuum, 28 degrees. Your cruise, this... That is gonna be your base, your vacuum, plus your mechanical, 48 degrees. Wide open throttle, base plus mechanical, 36 degrees. And your start, that is just your initial start with nothing else kicking in. I put mine at 15 degrees. It can just be your base because that's where you were before you even did all this. So let's say you have an unknown distributor and, and you don't know. So you know what your base timing is. You can take a timing light and you can figure that out. Let's, let's say your stock distributor is still in there. You, you want to find out what's going on. Grab your base timing off your timing light. Unhook your vacuum distributor. And if you have an adjustable uh, timing light or you might have to just kind of maybe make extra marks on a damper, figure it out. Rev the thing up to three gram while it's running and then see what your timing difference is between your base and what you're at now. The vacuum's unhooked. That is going to be your mechanical advance. Write that down. Now, if you want to go back and figure out what your vacuum is, let it come back to an idle and suck on that hose with either your brake bleeder 2000 or just your lips, but get full vacuum on that thing and then see what the difference is on your crank with your timing light. And that's your vacuum advance. And you can use that formula from earlier, plug it all in, and that should get you up and running. Now there's a ton of other work you can do and that's why you're going to the HyperSpark in the first place. But base, just match what you already have if you liked it and go. Thank you.